The truth about the last shot training aids. Is it really the best training aid of the year? Let's find out the honest reasons. Right, before we actually get into the products, I want to talk to you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a chapter down at the bottom so you can skip through what you want and stay for what you do. I want this to be an honest review and I want to go into detail about these clubs. So I want to talk about what is like shot, first of all. Why is it it's blue whippy shaft? Why has it been circulating on social media so well the last few months? You would have seen it on TikTok, you would have seen it on Instagram and YouTube and so many different content creators making videos with these lag shots. So I want to talk about that. Then I want to talk about the pros, how it's helped my game and honestly why I think it's one of the best training aids of the year. But I also want to talk about the cons because I definitely think there's a few things that they could improve in this product. So I can go through that. And then we're gonna go in the chipping area, use the wedge, hit some drives, take it out on the golf course, try it on the golf course, and then use my normal clubs and see if it makes a difference straight after using the lug shots out on the course and not just the range. So it's gonna be a really fun and informative video. Let's get straight into it. So this right here is the lag shot seven. It's actually the extra large lag shot. So basically all that means is it's slightly longer in length. I'm quite a tall guy. My normal 7.9 is an inch longer in length. So I thought it'd be interesting and cool to try and get a lag shot similar size to my 7.9. Let's talk about what lag shot is. What is this blue whippy shaft? And why is it currently the best training aid of the year? So first of all, lag shot. It helps create lag in your swing. So if you don't know what lag is, basically lag helps create power and distance in your swing. So it's actually the point of here in the swing so this is lag, and obviously through impact, it helps create that distance. It also helps with rhythm and tempo, which I've seen a big improvement in. So that's the one for me. With me, what happens normally is as I get to the top of my swing, I snap. Can you see this how the shaft bends here? If you snap, there's no way you're gonna hit the ball. You're gonna snap, you're gonna open that face, and it's just gonna shoot way right. So. This training aid has helped me massively with not necessarily slowing down my swing, but finding a rhythm in my swing. And that's one of the beauties of lag shot and why it's helped me. So I'm gonna be honest with you, when you do get the lag shot product, and even now that I've been using it for over eight weeks, you're gonna hit the ball up right. There's no question about it. You're gonna hit the ball right. And it's not a bad thing. I don't think hitting right is a bad thing with this product because it is an aid, it's a training aid, and it's to give you feedback but it's definitely frustrating for the normal golfer. I took this product over to the driving range a few weeks ago and I let people hit this club and see what they thought. And I'm gonna go into the pros in a minute. I'm gonna talk about the pros, but I just want you to be aware of what's gonna happen if you are using a lag shot or if you're thinking about buying a lag shot is you're gonna hit right. It's frustrating for a golfer, especially the people at the driving range because they were getting 15, 16, 17 balls and I'll say 10 out of those 15 balls were going right. It's very rare that you actually do square one up, but when you do, trust me, you feel the feedback. So let's talk about some of the reasons why you might be hitting right with the lag shot golf clubs. Like I said, lag shot is to help you create lag. And the only way to create lag in a swing is to have your hands ahead of the golf ball. So say the golf ball is positioned right here. The only way to create lag from this point is your hands have to be ahead of the golf ball. Now what this tends to do is it opens up the club face. So with an open club face, you have more of a chance of hitting right, but especially with this whippy shaft, you're gonna hit right even more. So what happens is you create the lag, opens up the club face, the whippy shaft doesn't help the situation and it steers up right and you hit that right massive slice. Now, there could be other reasons why you're hitting that right. One is you could be too snappy in your swing. You could be rushing it too much. If you're rushing it, there's no way to control the lag shot. Again, it opens up the club face. You're gonna hit right. So there could be a few reasons why you're hitting right with the training aid, but you can feel you can feel, that's what I'm trying to say to you guys, is you can feel with this training aid the problems in your swing. And then when you go to your actual golf club, again, you can feel the difference in the swing. And that's what I like about last shot. But I do want to warn you guys, you are going to hit up right. So if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I'm happy to help you even further with them. So let's hit some balls over that white flag and let's talk some more. Yep, that's pretty much perfect. So with that swing, I actually felt really, really comfortable. It was a nice rhythm in my swing. 
I did actually, so I want to actually point this out because I've been using this product for so long, is in my head how I feel is I feel like I'm turning the club over more. So what I mean by that is I feel like the club's more closed here, so this angle right here, and I'm just turning through the ball, trying to keep that club face as square as possible. I'm going to hit a shot right here and I'm going to show you a bad shot. I'm going to show you what will happen if I'm too quick in transition. So again, over the white flag, what will happen is if I'm too snappy, watch out that. That will happen right there. You're going to hit this massive slice. And basically that's the feedback that you're snapping too much on your downswing. For me, this product is amazing if you struggle with tempo and you struggle with rhythm. Also, I know you guys will like this, if you struggle with slicing the golf ball. If you struggle with slicing the golf ball, last shot might be the perfect training aid for you. Let's keep hitting some balls for you guys because I want you to guys to see the product in full motion pretty damn perfect. So with the last shot golf clubs, as I was saying to you, is there's a lot of pros and for me, there's a lot of cons. So one of the cons in the product is the grip. If I show you right now, my hands are severely black from the grip and my glove, this was actually a brand new glove prior to using a uh, lag shot. So my glove is actually covered in the, I'm guessing the grip, it's literally the outer skin of the grip. Another con that I found with the lag shot, again, I'm just gonna be completely honest with you guys and it's something that I've picked up on is this club gets damaged very, very easily. I've had this for about two months and you would think I've had this for absolute years. Now, for me, it's not the end of the world. In my eyes, it's a training aid. It's not a golf club. You know, my alignment sticks are bent from where I've had them for so long. My super speed training sticks have got scratches on the bottom for where I've clipped the concrete from speed training. For a training club to have scratches like this on, it's not, it doesn't bother me, but it might bother you. So I just wanted to tell you that guys, because you might want to be a little bit more careful if you buy this product where you take it. I use it on the driving range outside and inside. I use it on the golf course. I use it absolutely everywhere. So just be aware guys, it does scratch a lot easier than you may think. Now I'm not going to put this as a con because I don't think it is. I think Lagshot actually made the product to be this way, but this shaft is very, very heavy, especially compared to your normal golf club. So after hitting a few balls with this, this feels like a feather. Now, a lot of people pointed this out at the range when I gave it to them. Some people liked it, some people didn't. I think it's very, very good because what it does is it definitely, I felt like it slowed down my swing, but in reality, it just helped me produce a better rhythm. So I'm actually gonna try and demonstrate that right now. I'm gonna hit a few shots with this and go straight over to my seven iron. So I'm gonna leave it right here and I'm gonna tell you the instant feedback. Now I know the instant feedback and I wanted to make sure I knew everything before doing this video. If you slice a golf ball, this is perfect for you. Keep watching. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Louis, club face. If I'm hitting out right, if you're telling me the product hits out right and all I'm going to be doing is hitting out right, how on earth is this ball or this club going to help me fix my slice? It's quite simple. You are going to hit out right, like I said, but as a slicer, the reason why you're hitting out right is a series of things. One, your path could be too out to in and the face could be too open. Yes, that is the obvious one. And with the last shot, you're going to try and turn over the ball more. Through impact, you're going to try and feel like you're closing the face and trying to square it up more. So although, in reality, even though right now I'm feeling like I'm squaring up the club face, and I've hit like a tiny slice, watch what happens when I pick up my golf club. So I take down the seven iron, the lag shot seven iron, I pick up my seven iron, straight away, this feels like a feather. But watch what happens to this ball flight now. Again, target line is that white flag. Straight left. Now as a slicer, you never hit left, ever hit left. And you're probably gonna hook straight away. There's a reason for that. So let's get into that reason. So now you're experiencing a snap hook or a straight pull left. You might be getting ball flights like this, where you're literally just snapping left, like that. Or you might be pulling left and you're really confused because as a slicer, that never happens. Now, all we need to do is tone it back a little bit. What you've been experiencing with the last shot is you're having to feel like you're squaring the face at impact. You'll feel like you're turning your hands through impact. So now, just dial it a little bit more back. We pretend that we've got the last shot in our hands. The club feels very, very light in our hands. We go up, we go down. So now I'm just gonna take a couple of swings with my seven iron 
And in my head, I do feel like I'm slower, but I'm not. I'm not gonna hit the ball any less further than what I was doing before. In fact, I might hit the ball even more further because I've actually got a nice, beautiful rhythm. And I'll take these shots every single day of the week. So I wanna to talk to you about other things that I found with lag shot, what's helped my swing, other than just rhythm and tempo and lag. I'm actually gonna talk about the takeaway and how it's helped my takeaway. Let me show you the takeaway drill with the driver. Let's not beat around the bush no more, let's not waste time. You guys probably came here to see the driver as it is the most frequently asked questions in my DMs. What's the driver saying and how is it good? I'm not gonna take all credit for this because my coach actually taught me this. I had three lessons with my coach with lag shots. I wanted to get my information straight with you guys. I wanted it to be honest and true and facts, straight facts, no caps. One of the problems in my golf swing with my driver was my takeaway. The takeaway is one of the most important parts in the swing. In fact, probably one of the most important because if you don't take the club right, everything from that point onwards, you're pretty much <laughs> So with the lag shot, what this stops you doing is snapping on the takeaway. So you can't take the club too fast on the takeaway because look what happens. You get this whip, right? So you have to more have like a, a one piece takeaway. You know, you kind of want to feel like there's a giant cog in your shoulder right here and there's little co uh, cogs and you're working together. So you're kind of just taking the club back. See, here you're just taking the club back right there, getting yourself into a nice point right there, up on your swing. And then from there, your swing carries on as normal. So with me previously, I took the club too far on the inside. So obviously if I did that with the lag shot, you can see how it snaps. So it's definitely a great tool White flag is my target line right there. It's definitely a great tool for the takeaway. Nice takeaway. Straight over the white flag, a little five yard fade. Obviously again, it's a very, very heavy shaft. You could probably actually speed train with this. I'm not talking about like, like that. I'm talking about, it's obviously a heavier shaft and you're gonna get more power. You've seen these, Dad. My favorite part of the video. Let's hit some drives with the big boy stealth. What I'm gonna do is, obviously, I've just hit a couple of drives, uh, transitioning from the lag shot driver onto my actual gamer. But before I do that, I want to talk about drills and talk about what you could do if you were going to buy the lag shot driver, iron, or wedge. Now, there is so many different drills you can do with these different golf clubs. And there are so many different coaches on YouTube explaining to you the different drills. So I'm not gonna go into that today. I don't wanna drag out the video and make it longer than what it should be. You're here to see a review. You're here to see if it is beneficial to you and I'm gonna keep it as that. But if you do wanna see drills from me and you wanna know different sort of drills, drop me down a comment. I will work with my coach. I will get you some drills, especially for you to help your game. For me, I felt that the best way the lag shot helped me was literally feeling what was going wrong in my swing because it's a great visual aid. You can actually hit balls with a training aid other than other training aids out in the market where, you know, it's just a ball on the end of a club or just weight. You know, you can actually hit balls with the lag shots. And I found that's a great training and feedback tool. So like I said previously, all my focus is, is imagining that lag shot club is in my hands right now, feeling that my shoulder kind of starts to swing. So I'm focusing on my takeaway. As it gets up to my swing right here, I feel like I'm pausing. I feel like I'm trying to create as much lag as possible. I feel like I'm just turning, turning the hands over, and obviously hitting that little draw. The reason why I'm focusing on that shot shape right now is like I said to you, if you slice a ball, we need to try and get out of that slice. We need to try and get out of that left to right, a more straighter ball flight, a more neutral ball flight, or a little draw. Blue circle is my target line. Let's try and put everything, let's not, just not kill it, Nice swing. You right, guys? So we come over to the chipping area and I thought I'd show you the wedge. It's gonna be a really quick segment. I'm just gonna go through the wedge and how it helps you and what it will help you actually on. So a lot of people, when they chip, let's go to this front flag, they might have a tendency of digging into the ground. So as you dig into the ground, can you see how whippy the shaft is? That's because I'm really snappy on the way through to the shot. So obviously you might dig into the ground, causing that 
If you do that on the golf course, this wedge is great for you. Also, if you fin the golf ball, you know, the reason why you fin the golf ball is the leading edge of the wedge, which is right here on the club, that gets exposed to the ball. So what will happen is if you're not keeping the shaft completely controlled, you might fin the ball just like that. I'm not gonna turn this into a chipping lesson, but what I'm gonna do is try and get a few balls at the front flag. So I'm just gonna try and hit the fringe and let it release. I'm just telling you what I'm trying to do so we can do it together. The way I'm gonna do that is I like to keep my face towards the target. I like to have quite a close stance. And then all I like to do is utilize the bounce, especially with the lag shot club. So that is the sole of the wedge right here. And all I wanna do is kind of feel that I'm keeping it steady and controlled and getting it past the ball, get that low point past the ball so I don't chunk it. So face the target, feet close together, and just try and get it close to the pin. So that was a little bit too far. Like I said, I want to kind of just release it just on the fringe, just dial it back a little bit. Oh, that's, that's perfect, go in. So you can see what I'm doing with the lag shot. What I'm trying to just do is keep it as stable as possible try and sequence it, that's the right word, sequence the club through so it gets nice brushing motion past the ball, using the bounce and then you're letting it just release to the hole. So that's what I'll do for the front flag, obviously for the back flag, very similar, I'll do the same sort of motion, this time my landing spot is going to be a little bit more further but back flag this time. just like that. And that is how the wedge can help you with your short game. So again, just like the driver, just like the irons guys, obviously we can put the lag shot down and we can take our normal wedge. So again, I've got 54 to match the club and just see what it feels like. It feels lighter, but look, it's perfect. Now you can see how transitioning from the lag shot clubs to your golf clubs will help your game massively. Oh, so close. Final part of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it so far. Let's go have some fun. Let's go out on the golf course. Let's play one hole only, par five. Let's take two shots. Let's do one with the lag shot, one with my normal golf clubs, and see what score I make better with which club. Do I perform better with the lag shots? Do I perform better with my normal golf clubs? Does it help out on the golf course? So let's go have a little bit of fun. Let's play one hole, finish the video off in style. But if you enjoyed the video, guys, please like, throw me a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's go play this for par five. And just like that, we are on the golf course. So let's have a little bit of fun. We are on the eighth hole, which is a beautiful par five. Cue the drum footage. The hole goes uphill, then downhill, and then uphill again. It only plays 501 yards from the tips, but it's actually stroke index six. So it's gonna be a fun challenge. For the challenge, obviously we're using the lag shots, which is driver, seven iron and wedge. And then obviously for the challenge, I'm also gonna use driver, seven iron and wedge in my own golf clubs. We have got two golf balls, which is over there. We've got a Titleist one, which is a tour speed. I'm gonna use that for the lag shots. And then I have got a Titleist four Pro V1, which I'm gonna use for the uh, normal golf clubs. And you're probably asking, why those two golf balls? I've run out. And it's the only two golf balls in my bag. So hopefully we don't go OB, otherwise I don't think we'll be able to finish the challenge. But up first, lag shot. I'm a little bit scared of hitting right, even though we have been practicing. So I'm gonna try and take this over the flag on the left-hand side. Obviously, in my head, I'm gonna be playing a cut here. Nice, drive out the way. For left! I mean, they've hit a draw. The first ever draw of the lag shot felt really, really, really nice though. And I guarantee you that it's gone a really long way. Up next, I have the stealth. I'm just gonna go for a straight bomb here. Try and get as much distance as I can out of this. Give myself an advantage over the lag shots. That ball needs to sit. That ball needs to sit. So, 
So far, lag shot one, normal golf zero. That drive over there, the stealth, carried way too far, way too far. That ball needs to sit and it hasn't, and I'm pretty sure that is completely into the woods. So I'm here for two of the lag shots, got a seven iron out. I'm just gonna try and hit it as far down there as possible and leave myself a nice, hopefully wedge into the green. I mean, it's not the purest of strikes, but it's gonna be in play and it's safe. Sit ball, sit ball. All right, I know where it is. I lost my drive, so I'm actually here for four. I'm pretending that I hit another ball off the tee and I've landed here. That, if you look over there, that is where I've gone. So I'm playing a drop from here. Still not in the perfect position. I've got to play a fade over this hanging tree. I'm about 185 away from the green, but I can only take a seven iron. So let's try and get it as much down there as possible. As you saw with the last shot, with the last shot, I left that face open. So I'm going to try and uh, turn this over a little bit more. Still gonna have to try and play cot, but let's hopefully I get it down there. <laughs> oh, it's actually money. I think we saw, I think we're on the green. I think we might have carried the green and gone long. Can you ring the bell? So not the best of strikes has put me actually in an awkward spot. I've got 115 yards to the flag. It's going to be too long for a 54 degree wedge. And the whole point of the uh, lag shots is to keep a nice smooth tempo. So I'm actually going to try and play a knock down seven iron with the lag shot. So it's 115 yards, set myself up a little bit left of the flag, just try and fill this. Group down a little bit on the club, weight forwards. <laughs> just right off the green. I think it was good a number and we're on the green. So my seven iron ended up being really, really long. I uh, ended up carrying about 190-ish. So that is my seven iron. And that is the tightest tour speed. So I'm gonna leave my lag shot there and we're gonna make our way over to the normal golf club. That is for par guys and that is for birds. Let's see what the outcome's gonna say. Well, that is actually wonderful. Maybe I should choose my driver instead of a putter. Nice roll, it's gonna be fast past that hole. Bit outside my line. Bit outside my line. Oh, little tester, little tester for par. Naughty, naughty. Even though the lag shot is further away, I'm gonna tap this one in for suspense and drama, just like that. You need to make that now. <laughs> that was a bug. It's time to add some heartbeats to the audio. Can the lag shots beat the normal golf clubs in a one hole match? This is for par. And it does, and it does. Tour speed for the lag shots, strict on that I found in the woods. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. What a fun way to end it. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in purchasing the lag shots, link is in the description below. I have a promo code. So if you're interested in that, I will leave it in the description. Go save yourself some money, enjoy it. It is a great product to use. I have fun with it out on the golf course. It has helped my swing. Yes, there's a few cons, but in my personal opinion, it probably is the best training aid of the year. Until next video, guys, what's next?